interesting things to make movies and video games. It's usually set up in a big steel cage and has a bunch of cameras all around the room, and then the actors are in you know full black clothes with a bunch of white dots all over their bodies, and then their faces too. <laughs> So at Envelux, we are trying to take that technology and bring it to everybody. And it's a simple shirt, and there's pants too, but I'm not wearing the pants now. Little tiny sensors built right into the shirt and pants. You just put it on, just like Lululemon and Armour Armour clothes. Washable, and you get something like this.
thank you everyone for having me here today. Good afternoon, Berkeley. Woo! I am Mickey Ferry, co-founder, chief growth officer of NFLUX, and at NFLUX we're making motion capture clothes for everyone. So motion capture has been around for decades, and it is used commonly in video games and in movies. Motion capture is this awesome technology that lets you control and become virtual characters with your body. Um, this is just a little breakdown of how motion capture is used today. So like I said, mostly for video game development and film. There's also a lot of research into the human body, life science research. It's used a bit in engineering and robotics too. So this is what motion capture looks like today. And it's, like I said, a big system. It takes up a whole room. It can take up to a day to set up sometimes. There's dedicated studios that do motion capture. It's a full-time business. And these systems cost up to $100,000. They're fantastic. But it's not something everybody can have in the living So recently, there's been a lot of reductions in cost for motion capture systems and new types of motion capture that's emerged. Uh, does anybody know what that camera-based system is that's up on the screen there? <laughs> yes, it's the, X, it's the Xbox Connect, and the Connect came out several years ago. They actually shipped 23 million units of the Connect, and it was bundled with Xboxes. There were a few games developed for it, but none of them were that great, so it never really took off at the consumer level. But it's still used in a variety of applications, that kind of technology. And then the other way you can get relatively low cost mocap is through a technology called IMU, and that's inertial measurement unit sensors. Accelerometers, magnetometers, gyroscopes, there are billions of them out there. They're in every smartphone. When you're playing like tilt games on your smartphone, the little sensor in there is picking up the, that tilt. And you know, there's systems out there today that are selling for $1,000 up to $10,000 for like a high-end IMD system. Because of this reduction in cost, motion capture is starting to grow rapidly. Just in the last five years, it's grown from like a $400 million industry to a $1.3 billion industry. And we are at the very beginning of a revolution in motion capture, really. These sensors are very tiny, and there are companies, us and several other companies out there, developing really low-cost systems with the vision to get this out there to everyone. What we've done that's unique is embed them into clothing. So still with most systems, you have to put on a bunch of straps and wires and connect them together and the setup can be up to like a half an hour. We've invented a shirt and pants that is comfortable, machine washable, and you literally just put on a shirt and pants, push on, and you are connected to any Bluetooth enabled device. So what are we using this for? As you saw outside, virtual reality, one of the big, I mean, you know, it's a theme throughout today, obviously it's a VR conference and we've got to talk about VR. In virtual reality, everybody has a head, and if you have hand controllers, you have hands, but the rest of your body is completely absent from the experience. So, NFLUX clothes give you a body in VR, and the first demo that we've created is a dancing game, almost like Dance Dance Revolution in VR. It's called Virtual Village People. You dance to the YMCA, and we use image recognition to make sure that you're in the Y pose, the M pose, the C pose and the A pose at the right time. Another thing we're using these clothes for outside of VR entirely, and I gotta touch on this, is in sports and exercise. And that's actually, you know, our, our team comes from sports and exercise backgrounds. Our you know, original mission is still a big part of Enterplex's growth, is when this is out there on all of you and everybody else who's wearing these clothes, you wear it at home to connect to your video games and VR experiences. Wear these clothes out to the gym, out to yoga class, out to the golf course, and we're sending data right into your app, and it's giving you coaching, you know, on, for example, your golf swing. Or on your yoga pose, you're going to get to see a 3D image in real time and afterwards of here's where you're at and here's where you should be at, kind of like a ghost animation. So this is actually uh, Kim, who's a local to this area, world record holder in the squat. Um, at 114 pounds she weighs, she, her, her world record is 402 pounds. She squatted. <laughs> and, um, you know, this is Kim, and that's her avatar, doing some squats in the weight room. So a little bit of 
bit inside the technology because this is kind of a technical Berkeley audience. So IMU sensors, they're each about the size of a dive that you can see it next to a quarter there. And then we've got a module in the center of the chest that basically collects all the data from the little sensors and sends it to the you know, phone or a computer. And we have right now an open SDK. So our vision is connect this building to every application that you know, should have data from the human body in there. It's an open SDK. We have a Unity Windows uh, desktop application out there working now. And about 50 developers who have this clothing, who have these clothes in their offices who are integrating it with their apps. I don't think anyone here is a, a current developer, but well, you know, hopefully some after today. If, if you are working on a Unity-based application, these clothes are ready to go today. For Unreal, Maya, 3ds Max, those releases are coming later. Our team was founded by Doug Hong, CEO of Enflux. Uh, he comes from a background in mass engine manufacturing, which you may not think is similar to producing this type of clothing, but actually, you know, in terms of designing, like designing and taking an engine for mass manufacturing, is actually quite similar to taking this clothing for manufacturing. And then you can see Pam Lee, uh, our VP of product. She worked at Lululemon for about 10 years doing their clothing R&D. So the two of them ended up manufacturing. Then on the software side, we have Eli, who's a rocket scientist and was doing a lot of work in missile defense. He's the one who actually makes the sensors and gets really good data from those sensors. Then on the software side, Matt and Jordan. Jordan was at Oculus uh, before he uh, started working at Enflux. And Matt, one of the co-founders, he comes from a robotics background. And then for myself, um, I have a PhD in economics, and I studied the economics of early tech adoption. So that was do I become a professor or actually start a company and use that knowledge to build something? And the second option sounded a lot cooler and more fun. And so far it has been, at least. So now a question for the audience. We've got these clothes, they integrate with an Oculus headset, they integrate with Vive. We're working on a Gear VR application. And this is a VR crowd, so what I'm going to ask you guys, and I'm going to open up for questions now too, is which, which VR experiences, or even which traditional games on, you know, on PlayStation or on Nintendo or wherever, what games do you want to play where you actually, you jump into the game and you become the character? And that's, that's the gameplay. And I'm open to any, any ideas because we're developing this for everyone as a product that you're actually going to want to use when you play games. Uh, not as much a game as I wish in like 20 people in the classroom sharing Okay. I feel like more immersive to have everyone like, you know, they vote in when they talk. Everyone wants to see what they're saying with their hands. I, I think that's right. And actually it's great that you bring that up because one of our developers is actually building an education platform. And the vision there is to start, get this uh, to uh, university professors who are teaching online classes, get them. And actually Altspace is really into this concept too. So there's in VR, at least at first, we're going to have content producers and content consumers. And the producers of the content are going to be the ones who have the vibe, and they have the leap motion, and they have influx photos, and they have you know, all, all these kinds of input devices. So, but then consumers are the people sitting in the audience and watching more of a live performer. So, so his distribution model in the education is get these suits on the professor, so a professor can walk around, and then all of the students would have cardboard and gear yards and be able to log in and watch the professor teach. So, um, about the games, like now, if I remember correctly, you have five senses, right? On the shirt and on the hand. Like, how, 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 like have you ever tried to think how to detect the movement of the game? So, if you go into sports or anything, so, like, how to detect the, the finger movement? That's what we yeah, no, that's a great question. So it's about, um, are, are we going to do finger movement? Um, yeah, have you, have you ever thought about it? Or? Yeah, I'd say short run, like Enflux is not going to be involved in the hand tracking because there's a lot of companies out there doing great work in hand tracking. I think Leap Motion's come the furthest with their optical hand tracker. There's a few other companies working on VR gloves that will you know, do tracking just based on the movement of your hand. The benefit there is it can be outside the camera, out and outside the head-mount display. Um, we're going to be releasing a shirt and pants with five sensors each as the first version. Our hardware roadmap after that is going to include a shoe insert. 
to be able to get like a quick movement. And then also suits with more and more sensors in them to get you even more realistic movement. Um, do you guys have a roadmap making communications modules? Because like 